Hey guys, it's JJ. Welcome back to the Lions franchise. I'm gonna do another season, but the format is gonna be a little different. And today we're gonna go through the entire offseason stats recap, then re-signing stage, unrestricted free agency, and then the draft. We're gonna look at the UDFAs and stuff. First up, we have the individual season stats. Dwayne Haskins, he had a fine year. He didn't have to do a lot because the running game was going really well. We had three solid running backs and the offensive line was pretty okay. Calvin Short, 898 yards and 10 touchdowns. I'm gonna look to expand that role next year. He's gonna have a lot more than just 182 attempts. Karyon Johnson, his role is gonna probably diminish or be gone. We don't know what we're gonna do with him in the re-signing stage, but he had a solid season, as well as Craig Sutton, who had 75 touches with 337 yards and four touchdowns. For receiving, Lindell Thierry, once again, great season. I think it is the third thousand yard season of his career. He also had 10 touchdowns. Then we have Calvin Short, he had 678 yards and three touchdowns i hope we're gonna expand that as well and then jj ortega whiteside almost 700 yards despite being hurt most of the season i think he missed about seven games eight games maybe but he also had 10 touchdowns he is a red zone threat if i've ever seen one and then his role was taken over by orlando kershaw he had a fine season he won rookie of the year 519 yards and six touchdowns his six foot one, 197 frame is pretty nice for the end zone as well. And then Raheem McLaughlin, who was hurt at the beginning of the year, and he saw his role diminished as well. Less than 500 yards and only three touchdowns. He is a third down guy in short yardage situations and stuff like that. And then TJ Hawkinson, he was healthy the entire season and he only had 30 catches, but he also had five touchdowns. And then Jamel McLean, he had 18 catches, 194, and a couple of scores. For the defense, Luke Wagner was all over the place as well as Justin Gunter. I think this is our duo of linebackers going forward. Ramon Colon has not shown yet that he is good enough to be that second sub linebacker. And then Justin Gunter also had 12 tackles for loss. He is such a good run stopper. Luke Wagner had nine. Terrence Rodriguez was more of a run stopper this season, but we're gonna see what we're gonna do with him. His contract is expiring here, his rookie deal is up. And then for sacks, Carlos Jefferson, the big story. He broke the sack record by Michael Strand. 23 sacks in the last season, and he barely got it done in the last game, but pretty great season by him. Also, he showed up in the postseason. And then Kevin Sutton, the defensive rookie of the year, 12 sacks, great performance. He is gonna start next year again. And then Christian Wilkins, he had six and a half, six and a half sacks. He had a pretty great season as well. Terrence Rodriguez, pretty disappointing. And he had good sack numbers for the entirety of his rookie deal, but he had a lot of coverage sacks in there and this year he didn't get the coverage sacks and that resulted in only five and a half sacks. And then Amari Burns who had only two sacks but he had very limited playing time. He had over his first two seasons four sacks but his sack per attempt number is higher than Terrence Rodriguez's from last season. And then also for interceptions we have Jeff Okuda, Jair Alexander, Justin Gunter, Luke Wagner, only two picks this year. The quarterbacks got smarter and didn't throw at him. And then Kevin Sutton, turnover machine here, forced two fumbles in the backfield and had a really great season all around. For the team stats, the Lions have a pretty good offense. We rank I think just inside the top 10, maybe just outside, but around the top 10 mark. I think that's fine, but we're gonna have to get better because you're gonna see what happens to the defense. Our passing yardage situation was okay. We were kind of middle of the road, but we didn't have to pass a lot because our defense kept opponents out of our end zone. So we didn't have to do much. We could run the ball a lot. 
for rushing yardage we were top 10 definitively and I am gonna look to expand that rushing offense as well we had the best points per game our red zone offense was literally perfect it was so good and then for the defense we had the best defense in the league but I do not expect that to continue next season we also had the best pass defense we didn't have the best run defense because we were run over by some teams the Vikings for instance but still top 10 I think that's fine but I think our defense is going to take a dip next season and we had only 274 points allowed that is pretty good and we had the fourth most sacks in the league and I hope that number is going to go up next year and yeah for fumbles we only had one recovered despite having I don't know eight or nine forced that is pretty disappointing but we were tied for first in interceptions so that makes up for that our coverage unit is pretty good but we're gonna lose a couple cornerbacks this offseason probably because contracts expire and then for conversions our third down percentage is so great because we managed to get in third down situations that result in like third and two third and one third and four that is a lot more manageable than third and ten or third and twelve and our red zone offense Perfect, literally perfect. I can't describe it any other way. We had the best red zone offense in the league, but we also had the worst red zone defense in the league. 86% allowed, that is not great, but we forced a lot of field goals. If you would calculate the number of points teams got from red zone trips against us, that would probably be, be the lowest in the entire league. Now we're gonna go to the standings. I'm just gonna do that because there is one interesting thing here. Because we own this New Orleans Saints pick and they are gonna pick ninth overall. And so we have that pick, so we're gonna pick ninth overall. And you're gonna see how that is gonna turn out later. Then for the status of the team, Dwayne Haskins is for now the starter. He's gonna go into the third year of his contract here in Detroit. Tyler Kingsbury is gonna be the first backup and Pat Messina is gonna be the second one. But I think there might be a quarterback controversy a couple years down the road when Dwayne Haskins, when Dwayne Haskins contract is expired, but we'll see. For the running backs, we have Karrion Johnson. He looks like, a, like our number one, but his contract is expiring. And I don't know if we have the money to keep him around. Calvin Short, he is our primary running back, I would say, because his receiving upside is so high. He has 96 speed as well. He's such a great running back. And then Craig Sutton, he's just kind of a relief pitcher, if you want. And then for our receivers, we have JJ Arthega Whiteside. He recently signed a contract. He's going to stay here for a long time and be the number one guy. And then Raheem McLaughlin, he's our slot guy for the moment. And then Orlando Kershaw is down at the depth chart. He's going to be our third outside receiver if any of Arthega Whiteside and Lindell Thierry is getting hurt. He's going to be there to step in and get the work done. He did it this season and I think we didn't see really a dip in production. And then Lindell Thierry on the other side, I mean, he is solid, 3,000 yard campaigns in his career. Jamel McLean, he is our fourth receiver. He comes in in four receiver sets and he only had 18 catches this year. So we'll see how that is gonna go. And then Owen White, I just signed him off the Bengals practice squad, but we'll see what we're gonna do with him. And then for tight ends, I think we're set for the future. I think we have been set for years now. And I think that's not gonna change. Hawkinson, Sharp and Bryant is a brilliant trio of tight ends. The offensive line has been kind of a weakness for the entire series, but this last season, it was a lot better. It might have been because we had some plus three morale boosts for most of those players and 
but but that's fine i think we're gonna go to the playoff next year again so i think we can count on the morale boost as well quite far john wise Frank Ragnar, a solid right side. The left side, not so solid, but John Wise's contract is up this year as well, and we do not have a lot of money. So we're gonna see how that re-signing stage is gonna go. Matthew Wilkinson has been a, disappoint a disappointment in my opinion, but you will see later what I mean. And then Sidney Woodyard at left tackle. He is not a transcendent left tackle in the league, but I think it's fine. And then for the defense, Kevin Sutton, great rookie season. He's going to start at right end next year, probably. And then Amari Burns is there still. He was a first round pick a couple years ago, but he hasn't been able to get on the field and was hurt when Kevin Sutton started his rookie campaign. And then he never got the job back that was promised to him. And then Jeremy Gabriel. He is a solid run stopper, not a good pass rusher. He had not a single sack this year. Not a single sack, not even a half sack. Carlos Jefferson, best player on the team by far. And then we still have Christian Wilkins. His contract is up. DeMar Dell's contract is up. So we're going to have some controver controversy at defensive tackle as well. And then Terrence Rodriguez, pretty disappointing season. And his contract is up as well and we do not have a lot of money so that first draft class we had a lot of contracts are up and then for cornerbacks there is another contract that is up from that first draft class that is Addison Wheaton and I'm not sure I want to keep him around also Amani Urwarie's contract is up and Dominique Calloway the fifth cornerback or sixth cornerback depend how you look at it he, his contract is up as well. So Kyle Hazelwood is probably going to slide into slot cornerback this year as Jaya Alexander and Jeff Okuda continue to be one of the best cornerback duos in the league. And they had two pretty great seasons, I would say. Our passing defense was phenomenal. And yeah, Manuel Warrior has not been able to stay on the field. When I got him there, he didn't play well enough. So Edison Wheaton took his job a few years ago and now both their contracts are up. And for safety, Tracy Walker's contract is up as well. And I'm gonna, I'm probably not gonna resign him because I don't think we have the money and I think there is more important positions on the team. And then Jeff Cheney is probably gonna take over that spot and I'm not really confident with Jeff Cheney, I don't think he is one of the best safeties here on the team and I'm not really looking forward to him taking over. Luke Wagner is one of the best linebackers in the game. He had a quiet season, but I think it was fine. He had a few TFLs, he did what he had to do. A couple picks as well. Braden Lawrence came onto the team just at the end of the season from the Vikings practice squad and I think He's gonna be fine. I'm trying to re-sign him because that run stop role is so important. And then for middle linebacker, Justin Gunter just got X Factor. I don't think I showed that in the last couple of episodes, but he got X Factor, which is so valuable for that dev. His dev bar going into his fourth season is at 6,000 XP. That is literally nothing. Ramon Colon, he got his job stolen by Justin Gunter because Colon is just not a playmaker and he never was and I think he is probably never gonna be. He was a steal in the draft but he has just not developed the way I want him to. And then Miguel Cruz, he got the job at right outside linebacker in base personnel because he's just a good run stopper. He hits hard. He hasn't forced a fumble yet but I think it's bound to happen. And then for free safety, I think we're set. That is one of the best free safety duos in the league. And then Terrence Rodriguez also gets an upgrade here. I talked about him a little bit. I am not sure when I want to keep him. I think we don't have the money to. And he has such good ratings at power moves and block shedding. And it didn't show in the gameplay. So I don't know what happened there. He also does not have the greatest athleticism. But we'll see what I'm gonna do in re-signing stage. And then Justin Gunter, he's going into his fourth year. 
So that means his contract is up next year and I don't know if we have the money to keep all of these pieces around. We have to let some of them walk and his skill set is just so perfect for a run stopping middle linebacker that has some upside in zone coverage. And then left tackle Sidney Woodyard, I think that we're going to be fine with him. John Wise, he's one of the players that has his contract coming up and he just got plus two strength. That is so valuable, literally. That is so valuable and his ratings now look a lot better to me just because he got that strength boost. That makes it all the better and maybe if I'm gonna put some pass protector upgrades into him, maybe he's just gonna be fine. Maybe I'll try to resend him. Lindell Thierry got a great upgrade here. Deep route running, medium route running, release, change of direction, awareness. He is, he has become one of the best receivers in the game in absolutely no time. But his contract is up next year as well, so I don't know how I'm gonna handle this. All these expensive contracts coming up. And then we're gonna go to retirement. David DeCastro retires after 13 years in the league. Pittsburgh Steelers lose a really good guard. The New York Giants lose Kyle Fuller, but his career went on a downward trajectory. And then the Patriots quarterback Cam Newton retires. So they have an opening at quarterback there. Also, the Cowboys lost a couple players, Melvin Ingram, but also Tyron Smith, who just signed a new contract. He retires after signing a new contract. They have a huge hole left there at left tackle. And then the New Orleans Saints have Cam Jordan retire. Also, Matthew Stafford, the ex-Lion, retires after 16 years in the league. Fletcher Cox retires. The Falcons with a big problem there. And then the Eagles have Lane Johnson retiring. There is a lot of great defensive and offensive line players retiring. Chandler Jones, he was a problem for years for Clyde Farr and now he just retires. And then Von Miller is also retiring. And then we have a lot of other players down the list here. Alejandro Villanueva. He also retires. The Pittsburgh Steelers are gonna have some problems with all these players leaving the city. And down the line we have Patrick Peterson as well, but his ratings degraded a lot. And then we have only three players in player regression. I thought it would be a little bit more, but Tracy Walker down eight points. I don't like it a lot. And I don't think we have the money to keep him around anyway. So I think he is probably gonna be gone. And then Owen White, he is the first player up. I wanna re-sign him because he has a really solid set of ratings. And I'll make him a $7 million deal. He's only 25, he can still develop into something better here. And he's gonna be a nice backup if he accepts and he does. So he's gonna be coming back for two more years. Braden Lawrence, wanna re-sign him. He is not the greatest linebacker prospect I've ever seen, but 87 block shedding, 84 tackling, 81 pursuit. I think that is a skill set that we need in this organization. We saw how valuable he was against his former team, the Vikings. So I'm gonna offer him this $3.5 million deal over two years and he takes it, he's gonna return to the team. And then carry on Johnson, four year offer is the fair offer and I don't think so. That is way too long and he's gonna be in his 30s by the end of that fair offer. So I offered him a one year deal but he is gonna test free agency and as you can see on that tab there, we do not have a lot of money in this free agency. It's less than 20 million and that is why I am not gonna offer to Terrence Rodriguez. We just do not have the money and we have such, so many huge contracts coming up next year. It's gonna be Lindell, Thierry, Justin Gunter, Matthew Wilkins and Calvin Short. And that is also why I don't think I'm gonna offer to Tracy Walker here. He's gonna walk as well into free agency. We'll see, we'll see where he is gonna sign. And then Christian Wilkins, he is a nice piece in the rotation at defensive tackle two. 
but I don't think we have the money and maybe I'm gonna resign him in open free agency, but not right now. And then John Wise, I did not want to have this O-line fall apart, so I made a competitive offer for him, a three-year deal worth more than eight million a year and he accepts the deal he's coming back and that leaves us with almost no money to sign anybody else now we have addison wheaton he is a good player but he is already 27 years old at the end of his rookie deal and i don't know and i don't think we can resign him demar dell He's basically Jeremy Gabriel without the superstar dev, so I'm not gonna re-sign him either. We just lost two pieces at defensive tackle. And there we are gonna lose a second cornerback. He is 29 and he's gonna regress. 76 overall is gonna be the best he's ever gonna be. And then for the third cornerback, Dominique Callaway. He has his deal come to this end and I want him to stay around so that I do, don't lose all my depth. One year deal, almost 3 million and he's not gonna take it. He's going to test out free agency. And I can tell you right now, he went to the Falcons and he's gonna be a starter there. And then we have Matthew Hurley here. He is a nice piece of depth along the offensive line he's a good tackle and i want him to stick around we cannot lose our o-line depth so i made a competitive offer and he takes it he's gonna come back and then ramon hernandez he is a swing guard or backup center and i made a competitive offer for him as well and he takes the one year deal he's gonna come back and that's it for resigning stage I thought about having Kerryon Johnson on the tag, but the tag is 12 million at running back this year. And that is way too much. So we're gonna go into open free agency. Let's see what's there. And there is Eric Armstead, but it's way too much money. I do not have any money to spend on anything in free agency. Stefan Gilmore is out there. Kerryon Johnson is ranked number three among free agents here best at running back tied with james connor who already has a lot of interest from some teams around the league and then Auden tate also enters free agency and deontay bryant enters he was the one receiver from that first draft class that had 10 first round receivers deontay bryant was that one receiver i would have drafted if i would have drafted a receiver at all Allen robinson enters free agency so he's gonna go away from the bears finally terence rodriguez we can see him here and then glenn dawson didn't get an extension in buffalo so he's gonna enter the market as well and courtney howard is the player that i was considering he was the other defensive tackle in the first draft class along with carlos jefferson but jefferson had the better combine and so i took jefferson and i think it's paid off Morgan Pemberton, one of those three great cornerbacks from that first draft class, he enters free agency as well. Jack Conklin enters. Eddie Jackson and the Chicago Bears have their defense fall apart here, I think. Darius Slay, Connor Robbins, he was the first receiver drafted from that draft class. And the Eagles just let him walk in free agency. Otis Morrison, the left guard, he's gonna walk into free agency. And the Dallas Cowboys didn't extend Enrique Richardson, so he is here in the free agent pool as well. The best tight end from that class, and Adonis Kemp, another one from those first round receivers. And then Cole Sharp, one of the better O-linemen in that class. But I think he's gonna make a lot of money. And then Kyle Harris, also one of those guards from the first draft class. If I would have would have let John Wise walk into free agency, I think I would have had to overpay some of these. And then Darian Taylor does not get an extension from the Packers, so he's gonna walk into free agency as well. Now you can see Jamal McLean has a huge contract. He earns 15 million this year because I took the fifth year option because he was one of those 10 first round receivers and that 15 million dollars hit is way too much for a fourth receiver so i 
attempted a trade with the Ravens. They have $50 million in cap space. That is most in the entire league and they have the worst receiving depth chart in the entire league. So I offered them McLean for a fourth rounder and they took it. So I like that deal a lot because it gives us a little bit more financial freedom and that we can use to get Deontay Bryant. I want to offer to him because he is such an intriguing player. He has the great speed, a lot better than Jamel McLean's speed. He has a lot better catching ratings. He's a great route runner. He's just a great all around player. Six foot one, 200, you can play that outside and in the slot. And I'm gonna offer a four year, $40 million deal to him. I don't really think we need him, but I think it would be smart to get a player like him to make our offense even more explosive. And we'll see how that goes. We're gonna advance this week. And we are here, stage three. Did we get him? Yes, we got him, Deontay Bryant. After four years with the Denver Broncos, comes to Detroit. And I finally have this guy on my roster. I love that dude so much. And he is gonna start out in the slot for now, I would say. And then we have a couple fifth year options to take care of. Matthew Wilkinson has not been developing like I wanted him to. So I say we take the option, considering it like a franchise tag situation. If he doesn't produce this year, there is a chance I'm gonna just trade him that next year like I just did with Jamel McLean. And then the other fifth year option is gonna be for Justin Gunter. And I thought about taking his as well, but I think those fifth year options are a little bit too expensive. And I'd rather just sign him to a three or four year deal after his fourth season that is coming up here so I passed on his option and then his contract is gonna expire a year from now so yeah and then we'll look at league signings Deontay Bryant was the only guy I signed but around the league Eric Armstead completely unnecessarily goes to the Raiders they have a great defensive line and now it just got even stronger Gilmore to the Jets He's got to get two revenge games. And then Karrion Johnson signs with the Patriots. And we are going to play the Patriots this year. I thought so, at least. And then James Conner, Auden Tate, Allen Robinson. He, wa he walks to another conference. Terrence Rodriguez. Of course he signs with a division rival. That is so frustrating. Literally so frustrating. And then Glenn Dawson signs with... Signed with the Vikings. Man, I could not believe it when I saw it. And then Courtney Howard signed with the Bears. What is happening? Three of those great players from the first draft class sign with division rivals. And then Morgan Pemberton. Finally, a good cornerback for the Pittsburgh Steelers. And then Connor Robbins. He goes back to Philadelphia. After they let him walk, they got him a deal. And then they also signed Otis Morrison. Enrique Richardson goes from Dallas to Atlanta. And then Tracy Walker, he signs with the Titans. Great signing. They had an opening there. And I really like where the Titans are going. They also signed Kyle Harris. They signed Janu Smith and Cole Sharp. That team looks a lot better. They just made a bunch of quality signings. And then Adonis Kemp, he walks to New York and he's going to play with Kenny Gala. They and then Addison Wheaton, he also goes to the Jets in that AFC East. So the Jets just have a great cornerback duo with Gilmore and Wheaton. And also D'Angelo Crosby signs with the Vikings. It was, yeah, I couldn't have expected it any different. And then DeMar Dell, he walks to the Baltimore Ravens and gets a big one-year deal there. I wasn't going to pay him $5 million a year, so good for him. And now these are our draft picks for this year. We have the first rounder from the Saints, with the first rounder from ourselves, the Super Bowl pick, and then the one second rounder. We got a third rounder from the Rams last year and a fourth rounder from the Ravens this year. 
Then we also traded the fifth rounder from this year away last year. So we do not have our fifth rounder, but other than that, it's just our slate of Super Bowl picks. One of the top prospects, one of the superstar of this draft class, I think he's gonna be a real superstar. 21 years old, 43840, great catching ratings across the board, great deep threat. And then the other good receiver, Andrew Scott, both of them had a story in that news tab and I think that means both of them are gonna have hidden dev. Although Andrew Scott is a mid fourth rounder and he appears to have Olympic speed according to that story. Then one good center I was targeting. Early third round projected but late first round value and great combine. Excellent combine. And then Austin Starling, he was the number one overall pick in that on that draft board. So I expected him to go number one overall. And he has okay athleticism, but nothing great, I would say. And then Taj Byers, I think he is a great steal for someone in the late first round. He has a great combine, excellent combine at defensive tackle. He, rem he reminds me actually a lot of Carlos Jefferson. And then a run-stopping linebacker, Brandon Shepard, 21 years old, 4'6", 440 is fine for a linebacker. And he has block shedding, tackling, and hit power in the top three. So I was targeting him as well. Lorenzo Love, a superstar middle linebacker. I just could see coming. I wanted him. If he would be there with our Super Bowl pick, I would have taken him. 21 years old, great combine great skills and then the best cornerback in the league in the draft Channing Hewitt he is 22 he's a little bit undersized but he has great speed great bench press and great zone coverage he would have been a fit as well so yeah and then this is the Heisman winning strong safety Alex Woodson 22 years old decent combine not the greatest speed though and of course, if you enjoy the video, I would appreciate it if you liked it and gave it a thumbs up. Subscribe for more Lions content and ring the bell for notifications. Let's go to the NFL Draft in 2025. On the clock, the Miami Dolphins with the first overall pick. They are just not doing well. They also had a number two overall pick a couple years ago where they selected Julian Cantu, a superstar edge rusher. I really want it badly. And with the first overall pick, they select his brother, Matteo Cantu, a defensive tackle out of Texas. They are gonna play on the same team. Miami Dolphins with Matteo Cantu. We'll see his ratings later. I thought Austin Starling was the better prospect of them, but we'll see how that is going to go for the Dolphins. And then the Falcons on the clock, number two overall. They take Austin Starling right end out of Georgia. He is that superstar edge rusher that is appears to be on every draft board every year. That one superstar edge rusher at the top last year was Kenya Spencer. And a couple of years ago, it was Julian Cantu. So Starling goes to the Atlanta Falcons. And then for the number three overall pick, the Washington football team selects Jerez Wheeler, defensive tackle out of Boston College. And now the Niners were on the clock. And that meant I wanted to trade up because a couple from that teams up until to our ninth spot wanted to have a safety and the Niners were one of them. So I made or tried to make a, a trade here, our ninth pick and our 32nd pick for the number four overall pick. I think that is fair. And it's also fair according to that draft board, that value chart by Jimmy Johnson, the Dallas head coach for, uh, I think about 40 or 50 years ago, he developed this value chart and this trade was perfectly fair and the 49ers took the deal. We move up five spots, giving up our late first round pick. And I hope it wasn't a mistake, but we're gonna select Heisman winning, strong safety, Alex Woodson. He's a little bit undersized. He is 22. I don't like that a lot. He has a an okay 40 yard dash, 
but that top three got me thinking and hidden dev i think it's probably going to be x factor because heisman winners always appear to be x factors after they come out there kevin sutton is one of the best examples for that and alex woodson that speed is perfectly fine i think he just ran a bad 40 but 89 speed at strong safety i think is perfectly fine he also has great pursuit hit power tackling he is such a great player and he also had the best man coverage the best press and the third best zone coverage in the entire draft class amongst every player not just safeties and then matthew garrett he goes to the green bay packers i could not believe it they got the best player in the draft matthew garrett who broke all the records at michigan according to that news story and we'll see his ratings later but he is gonna play in division i could not believe it and then the only draftable quarterback john meredith he goes to the tampa bay buccaneers they had an opening as well and he's gonna be the starter in tampa bay now eric clement a little bit of a reach here for the denver broncos but i think it's never too early to address a an important position like tackle so they get their guy and then the san francisco 49ers with our like originally the saints pick they take channing hewitt the cornerback the only really first round value cornerback we'll see his ratings later as well i liked him a lot despite his story being negative he screwed up at the senior bowl and then at 10, the Cleveland Browns with a great seal. I didn't even recognize this guy, Aaron Wall. We'll check out his ratings later, but they appear to have upgraded their receiver room. And then the Baltimore Ravens take Jimmy Jones. Another overdraft here, but these tackles are very rare, so you kind of have to overdraft. And then Isaiah, Mc Isaiah McIntyre. A left end out of Oklahoma he goes to the Titans I thought his combine was a pretty was pretty lackluster so didn't look at him and then Andrew Parker 72 overall didn't expect that I thought he would be a little bit worse but I think the Texans just took a just fine cornerback even though it was from the value it was a little bit of a reach but I think that's just fine we're gonna check out his ratings later and then Jack Mitchell, the best tight end, he goes to the New York Jets, who just upgraded a cornerback. I think they're getting ready to attack that playoff run. And then the Rams got a great receiver, Isaiah Stockton, who did not do the combine. And he appears to have some great athleticism, but I'll show you later. Mike Little, another overdraft at tackle, but you have to if you want to have a tackle at all. And then the Colts, Clayton Sullivan, an overdraft at middle linebacker. He had a second round value grade on him. But I think that is pretty good news for us because that means the second round is really valuable this time around. And then the Eagles go ahead and take D'Angelo Patterson after they took the Heisman winning JT Myers, edge rusher, a couple years ago. And now they have two great edge rushers and they still have Derek Barnett. Taj Byers, 79 overall, one of the best, tied for the number one spot at rating in this draft, 79 overall. And then the Raiders, they signed Eric Armstead. They still have Maurice Hurst. They drafted Damian Williams a couple of years ago and then they draft Garrett Bueller. They have now four defensive tackles and they only need one. And then the Patriots at the 21 spot. Joe Williamson, left outside linebacker out of Ohio State. He's an edge rusher and he's a pretty good one as well. And then the Seattle Seahawks, they overdraft for a cornerback. And I didn't think his ratings looked too hot when I looked at this guy, or at least his draft profile. And then the Dallas Cowboys go ahead and sign a really good edge rusher. And the Panthers also overdraft a cornerback in George Mooney. And now the Vikings, our division rivals, were on the board and they take another superstar edge rusher, Deontay Madden. He fell down the board, he fell and fell and fell to the point I, would have, I, I wanted to trade up and get him, but that would have meant to give up our next year's first round pick and that was not worth it. 
Now the best offensive lineman goes off the board to the Buffalo Bills. They lost a couple in free agency. And then the Bengals also overdraft a cornerback with a second round grade. And the Giants follow this with a Nova draft at edge rusher Marion McAllister. And now the Jacksonville Jaguars on the board with the 29th overall pick. And they take Lorenzo Love, the best linebacker in this draft class. And I'm going to show you his ratings later. But I was really convinced that he's going to be a superstar in this series if I continued it for a few more years. And then the Chicago Bears go ahead and really overdraft Trevor Etienne here, an edge rusher out of Youngstown State. But yeah, then the Steelers with the Super Bowl losing pick, they overdraft the cornerback. And the San Francisco 49ers with our pick, they take Martin Cage, overdraft an edge rusher there. Now we go to the middle of the second round and then the running back started to go. Damon Turner, he was not my favorite one, but the Baltimore Ravens upgraded their offense here. And then Enrique Shelby, one of those six players I thought would be superstars, superstars from this draft class. He is that one guy. If I wanted to draft a running back, I would have taken him, Enrique Shelby. He is going to be a superstar. And then another one, Enrique Culliver goes. And now the Jets are on the board. At this point, I was wondering when the left outside linebackers would go because I was targeting Brandon Shepard. And one of those outside linebackers were was now going. Marion Massey, great pick for the Jets here. And then another one goes, Micah Ramsey. And I was getting antsy because I didn't think Brandon Shepard... Brandon Shepard would make it to the Super Bowl pick in the second round. So I was waiting for a certain left outside linebacker to go off the board. And then he did. David Kitchens goes to the Panthers. And that meant I wanted to trade up, but the Vikings were on the clock. And if they wanted to take him, I was not going to trade up. I don't do to in division trades. And they, thankfully, did not take him. Alton Torrens, a defensive tackle. But we are going to trade up right here with the Bills. We pick six picks higher. And we gave up a sixth round pick. We also gave up our fifth round pick last year. So between our last pick in the fourth round and our last pick overall, there were three rounds where we didn't have any picks. But we're going to trade up here and we're going to select Brandon Shepard. And that is because I think that Justin Gunter, Ramon Colon, Miguel Cruz, all those guys, I don't know if we are going to have the money to keep all of them around. So I want to have another run stopper on the team. And I think this guy's profile, this guy's top three looks so well. And I'm really happy that I traded up. I would have taken him at 32 as well. And that is his value, apparently. He is 21 years old, still has a lot of room to improvement, but fine athleticism, 80 block shedding, 78 tackling, 77 pursuit, 77 hit power, and yeah, the coverage is terrible. That is so terrible, you can't even work on that. And of course, I changed, changed that number, 97 is not going to be the number he's going to be wearing. And then... The Chicago Bears took my center that I wanted to have, but I would have had to trade up for this guy, Sam Perkins. He is a great player and we can't have all the good prospects. So he walks to our division rivals. And then with our next pick, I in the in the middle of the third round, I was going to take Andrew Scott just because he has the story. He has the great speed and it is a possibility to get a cheap player on a cheap rookie contract that is going to be great and he has hidden dev he is only 21 years old out of fsu he is a prototypical slot receiver he's not going to wear 85 because that is retired by the lines but he has great speed and acceleration i was hoping for even more than that but i think it's fine honestly and then he has good catching good short route running that's fine to just start out with. And then he also has some good secondary ratings. 89 change of direction, 78 carry, 
83 juke move, 79 spin move, that guy looks like a running back to me. But we also have Calvin Short, so that's not gonna be an option. And so we're gonna continue here to our other third round pick that is at the end of the third round, pick 96. And I was thinking about our cornerback depth. We just lost three corners to free agency. And this guy, late fourth round projected, but he has good speed and a good combine overall. He's a zone corner, that's what I wanted. He only has normal dev, but I don't seem to be lucky with normal and hidden dev anyways. So yeah, he has 90 speed, 93 XL, that's just fine. He has good press and good zone coverage to start out with. He's never gonna be a man cover corner in the NFL, but I think that pick was just fine. And then with our first fourth round pick that we got from the Ravens for Jamel McLean, I'm just gonna trade out here with the Washington football team, get their future fourth and their future seventh. And that was just fine. And remember that fourth round pick because we're gonna talk about it later and then with the next pick end of the fourth round pick 128 i was not sure how i was gonna tackle this but aj haynes he is 23 years old but he's a great power back with great speed and great top three and also emmett mcfarland was right there great speed as well he is 23 years old, but he would be the perfect replacement for Addison Wheaton. So I didn't know what to do here. I also didn't know the zone coverage by Emmett McFarland. But I took him anyway, and he has hidden dev. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. How lucky I got there. AJ Haynes, I checked it out later, did not have hidden dev. So I think I made the right call. He's going to be a depth chart guy for a couple years but his XP bar is gonna be very low so he's gonna develop pretty fast and we also selected a cornerback in the draft last year Jalen Smith and so those three guys with Danny Griffin those three guys are gonna develop here and then at the end of the seventh round Mr. Irrelevant is gonna be the only draftable player I had on my board I took him there did not have great Top three, but I liked his athleticism and he was a seventh round value. We're gonna check out his ratings here because you can't do that if you draft Mr. Irrelevant. Let's go down the board. Dexter Hurts, 64 overall, normal dev, but he's 21 and he's a good speed rusher, I think. So we're gonna develop him. Maybe he can make the roster cut after preseason. He has good athleticism, I think, and a good foundation to start out with. At 72 finesse moves, his run stopping ability is gonna be trash though. Let's check out these ratings. Matteo Cantu, the first overall pick, great athleticism and hidden dev with 78 power moves, 72 finesse moves. He just looks great. And then Austin Starling, he did not have the greatest athleticism, so that was why I wasn't all that high on him, but 81 finesse moves, I think that's fine to start out with. And then Jaraz Wheeler, he was the third overall pick, great strength, great power moves. Also, good foundation to start on block shedding and finesse moves, nothing to complain there. Brian Hancock, then number four, number five overall pick, great speed. But zone coverage at 63, that's gonna be a problem. But I think he's gonna make his way into this league. And the Matthew Garrett, he did not have hidden dev. I was so shocked. But he has such great athleticism. 95 speed. He just looks like Deontay Bryant. And he's also the same size like Deontay Bryant. It's just Deontay Bryant 2.0 and he just went to our division rivals. And then John Meredith, hidden dev, great throw power. And I think these accuracies are fine to start out with. Channing, Hewitt, only normal dev. 93 speed, 94 acceleration, great zone and press. Fine cornerback, would have taken him if I didn't have already two great cornerbacks. And then hidden dev for Aaron Wall. The Browns here with a steal at the 10th overall pick with great acceleration, catching and speed. And then Taj Byers, only normal dev, but he looks even better than Carlos Jefferson as a rookie. 93 strength, great block shedding, but also really solid foundations on power moves and finesse moves. And then Joe Williamson, great pick by the Patriots here. 
exceptional first step with that 91 acceleration and he has already 82 finesse moves he is gonna be fine and then Deontay Madden he's gonna sit on the bench but he is a good player and he's already pissed that he had to go to the Vikings because they have such good depth at edge rusher and then Ro Lorenzo Love really loved his play um, his draft profile he looks just great 64 zone coverage not that great but he's gonna be just fine Enrique Shelby the best running back and he also has hidden dev 96 acceleration 94 change of direction 93 agility 88 carrying 85 juke move 76 spin move even 80 break tackle what don't you love about this guy the perfect running back prospect and they got him in the second round to replace Derrick Henry in a couple of years and then George Cooks the Arizona Cardinals in the second round with a steal at wide receiver and then we are going to go to our post draft offseason Craig Sutton you already know him he's a solid power back but I was looking for some competition. So I looked around the league in the free agent pool. Angelo Evans, he is one of the candidates. 91 speed, 91 excel, 93 change of direction. Great juke and spin, very balanced across the board. Really liked his ratings. And then Eddie Hartwell, he comes over from the Giants. 94 acceleration, 92 speed. He has the best acceleration amongst these running backs I signed. And he also has great juke move, great change of direction and then Kendall Mitchell he's a great running back as well I think he's the favorite to get the number two job um, behind Calvin Short 91 speed 90 acceleration 86 juke move and he has the best catching amongst these running backs and then also I signed Darian Taylor because he was just sitting there why not get some more competition in here I'm gonna have to cut somebody after preseason but I think his ratings just look so solid he needs to work on short route running a little but I think one or two upgrades a slot archetype and he's gonna be fine and then I found Eric Nelson a 25 year old backup left guard that even could start if someone were to get injured I really love him to, love to get him he doesn't have the great the greatest pass block finesse or run block finesse but I think that's fine and then I did this I offered this trade to the Raiders because we lost two defensive tackles to free agency we do not have a pass rushing defensive tackle next to Carlos Jefferson we I didn't need Jeff Cheney I already had Alex Woodson who is starting his career already better than Jeff Cheney is now so I offered this trade and they took it and that is the fourth rounder I mean it's our fourth rounder the Lions fourth rounder next year but that fourth rounder I got in the trade out is gonna be the replacement and it's probably gonna be even higher than this fourth rounder I just sacrificed Damian Williams he is the third defensive tackle on the depth chart for the Raiders and also for us but we have a 4-3 and they have a 3-4 I really like where his ratings are at right now. He has great athleticism and I think a couple upgrades away from good power moves as well. This is the Raiders depth chart, depth chart right now. Eric Armstead, Maurice Hurst and then Garrett Bueller who has hidden dev. He is 22 and within one year he can get where Damian Williams is right now. So the Raiders do not lose anything in that trade. Hidden dev rookie. A defensive tackle with 89 strength there 77 block shedding he's a little bit worse in athleticism but I think with a couple upgrades after preseason and then five or six upgrades during the season he's gonna be where Damian Williams is right now and this they will have Eric Armstead Maurice Hurst and I can't move them around because they have such great pieces at defensive end and left outside linebacker because that 3-4 scheme does not allow to get a second defensive tackle on the field really ridiculous and they also had the worst safety tandem in the league period Jeff Cheney is the best safety just arriving there he didn't play one snap he has a couple of years of experience in the league but he is already their best safety so that move was a win-win situation for both teams and now I want to talk a little bit about how this is gonna go so I thought about this for a long time. I didn't want ha to have these long extended periods of me editing videos to make it into one game and then 
you have to put out 16 videos plus the post season and that is all way too long so this is how i'm gonna do it i'm gonna upload a preseason highlights video next next episode and this is gonna be a few days from now probably it's take some time to play all these games and then after that i'm gonna break the season up into i'd say five or six pieces go through three or four games even at a time and really get through the season a little bit a little bit faster and then at the end probably the postseason is going to be one game per episode and this is how i want to get through all this stuff so that we can see unfold all these players careers we most of them we just had them for a couple seasons so for example Deontay Bryant I just signed him and then Lindell Thierry he has played three years I want to see continue his rise and then Raheem McLaughlin I don't know what I do with him Darian Taylor or Orlando Kershaw we have a lot of great pieces in that receiving room I want to see Calvin Short see in his expanded role this year. He's going to be the uncontested number one guy in the backfield. And then Kendall Mitchell, Eddie Hartwell, Angelo Evans and Craig Sutton. They're going to play out that second and third spot, maybe a fourth spot. But I want to see this play out. And then for the defense, for example, Carlos Jefferson. I just saw him four years, but a career in the NFL lasts for 10 or 12 years. And I just want to see if he can continue his rise as well as Kevin Sutton's rise or Amari Burns. He's going to get his shot at edge rusher this year. He's going to be a starter and I want to see how he is going to how he's going to do against those tackles in our divisions. And then for the secondary, we just got Javier Taylor a couple of years ago. We just got Alex Woodson. I really want to see all these players play out their careers for at least one more season, maybe, maybe even another season after that. But that is really far into the future. And yeah, that's going to do it for this episode. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed, please leave a like and subscribe for more Lions franchise. See you in the next episode. Until then, spread some love.